Welcome back to this another episode of learning reading and writing skills. On the last episode, we talked about reading specifically in selecting and organizing information with the topics getting an overview of the text, using context clues, using connotation, and denotation. Now, we need to learn the patterns of writing because we need this during or on our next learning. Are you ready to learn something new? All right, before we proceed on the specific details, we have a warm-up exercise. The question is, who is the father of American penmanship? Who do you think? The father of American penmanship is Platt Rogers Spencer, or Spencer. He was the, re the originator of Spencerian penmanship, a popular system of cursive handwriting. He was the teacher and active in the business school movement. Next, another. Who is the father of Filipino writing? I guess you know this already. The father of Filipino writing is Nicomedes Marquez Joaquin, or uh, known as Nick Joaquin. Nick Joaquin's name as a literary artist is considered by different university professors as a key figure in Philippine literature and English due to the imparted truths of his writing. In his different works, Nick Joaquin has presented objective realities about different events and people capturing both their good and bad qualities. Now let's proceed on the definition of writing. What is writing? According to Newnan, 2003, writing is the combination of mentally inventing ideas, thinking how to express them, and organizing them into sentences and paragraphs that will make sense to a reader. So in writing, it's a process that involves steps and methods to create a piece of writing and also writing is a communication it is also an art because imagination and creativity to express the emotions shared with the readers you know the chinese writer lu chi reflecting in his essay uh wen fu the art of letters the meaning is the art of letters wen fu the art of letters on the process of writing and being a writer acknowledge the power of written word. He said, Behold now the utility of letters. It extends over a thousand miles and nothing can stop its course. It penetrates a million years, the ferry from one to the other. Therefore, writing is powerful. When you write, you can express your ideas, you can express your thought, and you can express everything. Therefore, it says that writing is communication. It can reach across space and time to instruct, to entertain, and to touch others. It is a powerful way of sharing ideas and feelings. But if, if the writer has nothing to say, writing will not occur. You know, to be progressive as a student or a learner is or is or a struggling novice writer to a skillful writer, you need to understand the nature of writing process. To achieve the best result, you should be guided with some fundamental principles of writing, which include the following. Number one, you have to take note of this. Writing literacy starts in early years of child development. Writing is a creative act. Uh, writing experiences also should be uh, life-centered or sometimes you can express your ideas based on your life experiences. Writing for meaning also is paramount. Reading and writing, like speaking and listening, they are inseparable uh, process. That's why we have the writing and uh, reading and writing skills 
as a subject. Now let's talk about the writing process. Here you explore possible ideas or topics, choose your audience and determine your purpose for writing. Rewriting activities can help you generate possible topics by taking an inventory of your interests and experiences. You know, a process-oriented approach views uh, writing as a creative process. It focuses not so much on the product but more on the processes or steps the writer has to go through when, when they write. That is according to uh, White and Ump in uh, published in 1991. In other words, writers have to start with an all, uh, all over plan or overall plan by thinking about what they want to say and the audience they are writing for. There are steps in uh, writing. In pre-writing, um, I would like you to take note of this. The first is you have to set uh, or setting the purpose. You have to set your purpose. Number two is determining your audience. Who are your readers or who are your audience? That is important. Number three is selecting or ordering information. And finally, you have generating or hatching ideas. Now let's proceed on the pre-writing strategies or before you can actually write or before you write, you have to love writing. If you don't love writing, then you cannot be able to uh, write. In the pre-writing stage, you, are, you should have to generate the free flow of ideas such as you have to discover what you want to say and how to say these ideas on paper you have to put in mind think that when you speak that is how you're going to write as well the focus during the pre-writing is on planning you have to plan after exploring uh, possibilities for topics and how to present them you can begin gathering and organizing details to develop your main idea I want to share it with you some pre-writing strategies. The first one is the listing or brainstorming or jotting down all the ideas that pop into your head about your topic as you go through your list. You can try to look for connections between the ideas, whether they are big or small. The purpose of listing or brainstorming is to discover ideas for possible exploration independently or in in groups you can generate as many as ideas as possible from a given starting point the ideas need not to be related and may indeed stray into areas that are completely unrelated to the original uh, ideas let's say for example the uh, you can start with the word love if your topic is about love, what will you write? Or what you have to list all the words that are related to love. Let's say, for example, love is the key to peace and brotherhood. You can also have uh, it is the greatest commandment. Love can is it to forgive. Love conquers all. Uh, succeeds over evil. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is sacrificing. Or harmonious or love is a, has a harmonious relationship. With that, when you da jot all of those words that are related to your uh, topic, then you can easily compose your writing or your write-up. The next is we have the free writing or writing whatever comes into your mind about the topic for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Do not worry about punctuation, spelling or sentences the ideas that by writing freely later you can discover an interesting topic in this case i have experienced this when i usually write i tend to write all words that comes into my mind then afterwards i can dissect that or if this 
words or this phrase is related to my topic. And if it's not, I can disregard it. It depends on what my topic is all about or what I wanted the, the readers to understand. Next is clustering or concept mapping. In concept mapping or clustering, it's a technique that lets you narrow a broad topic into more specific topics. You can take a piece of paper, write at the center and connect ideas that are related to the broad topic. This is a method of visually presenting the results of a brainstorming or a discussion session. You can uh, record the relationship using the lines, you can, or, or stages to show the relationship of one idea to another. Let's say, for example, we have charts. You can have maps and idea trees or, or our other visual methods. Let's say, for example, I can use the word physical characteristics. In the center, the physical characteristics, I can say that dark complexion or uh, it's a tall, short haired, with eyeglasses and the physical character down the physical characteristic i can uh i can describe let's say for example my mother my mother my mother's uh, manner of dressing my mother what does my mother like in uh what she likes you can have the foods you can have the drinks, you have also the dislike, of course. And also I can another put line to her hobbies like uh, sewing, TV viewing, or another is the outlining. Outlining is listing down ideas from broad to narrow or some general to specific. It helps you to organize your thoughts linearly and makes it easier for you to connect ideas together. In outlining, you just have to list down the most important idea from a specific topic. You have to get the most important, not just, uh, you can have, let's say for example, it's like getting the most specific details followed by sub details and the rest or, or other details that support your Topic. After your pre-writing, you proceed to drafting. Drafting is putting your ideas into sentences and paragraphs. You arrange your ideas in such a way that allows the reader to understand your message. So in this case, writing the draft does not occur only once. Students or you as a learner may find going back and forth among the different stages, especially the writing, the revising, and the other uh, rewriting cycle. You have to develop your notes and outline, outlines into sentences and paragraphs. You have to organize your ideas as well, generated in the pre-writing stage into a meaningful and more conventional discussion, applying certain rules. Uh, we have the linguistics, the mechanics of uh, mechanics of writing. Drafting like other parts of writing process is highly personal. Why? The, because you have to produce a highly structured wherein you have to work from a very complete or rewriting notes, changing little and context of organization. There are types of dra drafting. The first is uh, what I've mentioned is the highly structured. In highly structured, the writer works from every complete rewriting notes, changing little to the context of organization. The next one is loosely uh, structured. The writer works from rough notes, experimenting with ideas and organizing during drafting. The next one is the bridges. The writer begins with two or three main points or situations to be covered and during drafting concentrates on using supporting details to build logical bridges between the points. 
in a quick draft, the writer works quickly, not stopping to refine ideas or rework materials until the revising stages. And finally, you have the slow draft. In this slow draft, the writer works meticulously, carefully crafting the one sentence or paragraph at a time. The revising is a continuous process in this method. The writer may also rework the piece of its entirety when the draft is complete. Most probably, a slow draft is more applicable to a novice writer. Why? Because the writer works meticulously, carefully crafting one sentence or paragraph at a time. It's a continuous process. Next is revising. Revising is how you rearrange, add, or remove words, sentences, or paragraphs from your draft. In this case, during revising, the writer or you as a writer, uh, main goal, you have a goal to make sure that ideas are expressed clearly and organized, especially the logical or organization. Then, after that is the uh, editing and proofreading. Editing and proofreading involves looking at your work carefully, making sure that it is well designed, has served as its purpose. Proofreading is making sure that your paragraph or essay has correct grammar, spelling, and uh, punctuations. Proofreading to correct errors in grammar, usage, and uh, mechanics is also important, but the greatest part of revising time is spent on the content. There are many methods of how we will uh, interrelate revising, editing, and proofreading because they go together. There are methods of revising. Sometimes a writer choose a method that suits his or her personal style and needs of particular piece of writing. Uh, one writer, for example, might share a draft with a member of his or her intended audience to get input for revision. Another might uh, simply put the draft away for a few days and then rework passages that seem troublesome. Most writers do some revision by uh, first is checking that all ideas and details are related to the topic and purpose. You can have refining good ideas and add new ones that could improve the content. Make certain that the purpose of piece of writing is clear and that the content of the writing suits the purpose. Another is refining the organization of ideas. Checking that each sentence flows smoothly to the next. Make sure that language and content are suitable to the audience. Substitute precise vivid words for a uh, vague language. And also proofread for errors in grammar, usage, and mechanics. This uh, step usually occurs to some extent while the uh, writer is drafting and revising content, but it is better reserved until after the shaping of ideas is uh, complete. There are some techniques that is advisable to, to discover ones that suits personal style and type of writing they are doing. Let's say, for example, is the conference. Uh, when you do oral evaluation, concentrate on both strengths and weaknesses. During the conference, you can answer the questions by... Uh, I mean is you are identifying some of the phrases or sentences that you have included if they are related to the to the topic itself. Another is a peer evaluation. In peers or small groups, you can have uh, your partner, you can have your co-students or co-learners to critique your writing through evaluating the other or are evaluating the other's uh, writing. You should be aware that there are writing, or I mean, you have to see the differences in approach and style between another writer as you guide them. If you can, you can guide them. You can also learn to appreciate those differences. 
Because in writing, we have individual differences wherein the style and strategies of another might not be similar or it would be different with another writer. As a novice writer, you can also ask question or you can answer the questions, the following questions. Uh, number one is, did I understand my composition? Were the ideas or were my ideas clear? Does anything to be, to be missing in the content? Are there any problems in organization? Or how did it make me feel sad or amused, touched or interested? What are some good points about my composition or how can the composition or how can it be improved? The last one is publishing. Publishing is submitting your work or sharing. Uh, there is a typographical error, sorry, or sharing it into a website so others can see or to other people or you can have the uh, print houses. Publishing is the final stage of writing process. After completing a draft or final copy of piece of writing, you are given the opportunity to share uh, your work with others. The new audience can be family or family members, you can have your friends, you can have your classmates, or a general public, or anyone who will provide some kind of feedback. In other words, a writer or, uh, yes, a writer needs an audience who will respond to the message rather than to be uh, the mechanics of producing it. There are some suggested techniques. You can have your uh, compositions by individual writer, by class groups. Maybe it can be a booklet, a bulletin board, newspaper, and magazines, readings, and performances. But in our case, we will use the, the basic one, which is the essay, writing essay. Now, how to do the uh, strategies or the writing process? In pre-writing, you can start with brainstorming, with identifying your purpose and audience. You can start with why do you want to write about yourself? Maybe you would like to tell about an adventure or, or maybe you can share a lesson you learned about someone or something. A partner can help you decide why you want to write with, with your purpose. You also can talk who will read your writer, your audience, by asking the right question. You can find answers to help you plan your narrative. Let's say, for example, what did I do last Saturday? Or what happened to my bicycle? How did my friend Patrick help me? Did I learn anything from the experience? You can also warm up by drawing pictures or making word cluster in your journal. In drafting, guys, by starting, you can write while you were thinking and planning. Now you just put your ideas and plans to work as as you write your uh, draft. As you write your personal narrative, try to remember as much as possible what really happened or you can check the facts and the punctuation later. For now, you just have to write, 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 and write. After that, in revising, it is important to think carefully about what you write before and after you write it. Now think what you can make your writing exactly the way you want it to be. I'm going to share you some guidelines that will help you writing a personal narrative. In personal narrative, you can start with the question, do, uh, don't forget your purpose and your audience. You have to ask yourself, why am I writing a personal narrative? Who could learn from my experience? Or you have to stick to the fact then remember, a personal narrative is a story about something that actually happened to you. Role play, how you will tell your story about yourself. You can have that. You can ask with the question or you can answer the questions. How will I begin? How will, what will happen in the middle? What will make 
or what will make the end of my narrative interesting. Now, as you revise, you have to notice how your draft is changed. What difference to the changes or you can say, is the story better now? In proofreading, mistakes can be creeped into anyone's writing. They often pop up in spelling and grammar. That is one of our biggest problems. So you have to guard it. What mistakes did the writer correct or discuss the corrections with your partner? Explain why each one is important before uh, sharing your work. Proofread it first. You can make final revisions too. It's never too late to make an important change. That is important. Especially when you are posting on your social media account. Before you post it, you have to proofread if your write-ups is suited with your audience. Because in Facebook or any other social media platforms, your grammatical errors, your uh, flaws will be easily identified or your the understanding of the readers will be different to your understanding as a writer. So you have to be careful with that. After that, you can publish it. Now, the first of a paragraph, we all know that we are familiar with the introduction, body, and conclusion. But in this case, we will use the topic sentence by showing the main idea of the paragraphs. You can have also the supporting details, pieces of information that provide the specific details to the idea. These are the details that you're going to support your topic sentence. And conclusion or a statement of a summary of the ideas discussed in the paragraph. Next is qualities of a good paragraph. There are qualities that we have to uh, think about it because this is important. When you don't have these qualities, your uh, paragraph would not, uh, would, or your write-up would, would be different with the others and it might be not interesting for the readers. Number one is the unity. The unity or oneness of idea discussed in the paragraph. Next one is coherence, the logical flow or details between and among sentences and paragraphs. And lastly, the development or the strategy used in developing the idea. To be able to achieve a paragraph or a coherent paragraph, you have to use the transitional devices wherein Transitional devices are words and phrases that connect and relate ideas, sentences, and paragraphs to have a logical flow of ideas. These are the connecting words. Another is parallel structure or parallelism is the use of similar pattern or grammatical form within a sentence or paragraph to achieve coherence. Next is the pronoun reference wherein pronouns must always clearly uh, refers to the noun they represent or the what we call the antecedent. Repetition is the intentional use of a word or phrase to emphasize a point. Logical order, it refers to organization of details used to support the main idea of a paragraph. I'm going to show you some, of, some examples of these uh, properties. Next, let's start with the transitional devices. In transitional devices, these are the connecting words. So the first example, there are ways you can make boring tasks more pleasant. For instance, listen to music or sing along with the music while you work. In this case, the transitional devices or the transitional device being used is the word for instance that indicates an example you have here. Next example is achieving your goals in life may seem difficult, but with hard work, determination, and industry, everything can be possible. What do you think is the transitional device being used? The transitional device that is being used here is the word but. It means that or it indicates 
a contrast. There are a lot of transitional devices, but there, these are just some of the examples. Next is some people in the province built their houses very close to the shoreline. Consequently, they usually experience nature stress during heavy storms. The transition word, it indicates cause and effect, and that is the word consequently. In parallel structure or parallelism, we can have this. During, an example, during a pandemic, most people are afraid, anxious, and cautious. What have you noticed with this? In parallelism, the words that you are going to use should be related to each other. Let's say, for example, it's an adjective. You're not going to use another part of a speech if your words being used or you are going to describe the pandemic. So the words here being used are afraid, anxious, and cautious. Next example is reading a book, listening to music, and watching movies are just some of the things that people do to pass away that time. In this case, gerund is being used because of the word reading, listening, and watching. You are not going to say read a book, listening to music, and watch movies. They are not uh, parallelly, parallelly structured. structured. The parents pick up the modules, the students answer the activities, and the teachers check their outputs. In this case, the parallel structure here is the past tense. The past tense of verbs, which are pick, answered, and check. And if you have noticed, the noun is, uh, the nouns were with the article the. Let's say, for example, the students, the parents, the teachers, they are considered as parallel. Next thing is we have the pronoun reference. In the first example, it is unclear. The teacher listened to Ella and she did not understand what she was trying to say. It is better to say Mr. Rojas listened to Ella and he did not understand that she was trying to say. In this case, the antecedent is uh, Mr. Rojas with the word she, Ella. He stands for Mr. Rojas and she stands for Ella. In writing academic text, it is important for us to think of the pronoun or the antecedent that we're going to use. As much as possible, we have to identify the specific name if we are referring to a person. Let's say the, uh, another example, the students are shouting at, the, at, at one another when his teacher entered the room. Better, the students are shouting at one another when their teacher entered the room. The antecedent of there are the students. Another is everyone has their own battles to fight. Better, everyone has his or her own battles to fight. The antecedent of his or her everyone, the indefinite pronoun everyone can either be a male or a female. Next is the repetition. This is very easy for us because we can easily identify the repetitive words or phrases or sentences that is being used in writing. Let's say, if you ever find yourself stuck in the middle of the sea, I'll all the world to find you. If you ever, it is just repeated. It was the best time of best of times. It was the worst. You can easily identify this. Let's proceed to the next one, which is the logical order. In logical order, there are cases that we use the chronological order, arranged in time, sequence. Let's say, for example, yesterday, last year in 2020, or morning, afternoon, evening. In a special, arranged according to a space relationship, you have the near, far, inside, outside, left, right, top, bottom. Next is according to importance. It is arranged based on the significance, 
most important, least important, least familiar, or most familiar. In sequential or procedural, you have to arrange according to a step-by-step -step process, first, second, next, afterwards. These are uh, very easy to understand. And I think this ends our discussion today. And I hope that you get some ideas or points on how you're going to write. I would like to see you on the next episode. So please tune in to another discussion. If you have a question, just uh, send, me, uh, send me a message or put your comment on this video so that I can uh, reply soon or I can answer your queries. That's all for now, and see you on the next episode. Bye.